In this vlog series, I am transforming an old three-story house into an eco home while living in my van conversion. At the moment, I am trying to install the shower. Uh, it's a little tricky uh, because the bits just go through the wall, obviously now they're inaccessible and they obviously at some point sort of need to hold the shower into the wall so they're kind of like getting the precise measurements and I've probably gone like probably two millimetres too far in um, but what covers up the bit behind it are these little cups um, and what I'm going to have to do is I've got some wet and dry paper and I'm going to have to basically very carefully Take down two millimeters of this, keep checking it, go down, keep checking it, and then smear all this up with um, silicon, like behind it, and then put on the cups, then put back on the shower, um, and then screw the shower in the top. And then basically, hopefully, fingers crossed, it's not leaking, it's done, it'd be a nightmare otherwise. Slowly but surely, uh, and then get it so yeah, it will fit in. So that's what I'm going to do today. Um, then I can put it on the top, and then, I can just, well, I haven't got the hot water heater plugged in because that's all going to feed off the stainer. Um, so I could potentially wire that up. Um, or I can basically use um, the cold water just to test the shower. Um, and just massive fingers crossed there's not like a leak in the joint. It's looking good. I'm really happy with this window. Hard to see probably, but it's the glass bricks and it looks quite nice. <clears throat> they will show off in the shower and then I'll put in the shower screen. I was just going to have a plain piece of glass, but. It kept cancelling it, I just gave in, I just bought like a, a like a black framed sliding door, which will be good as well because it will protect the outside a bit more from water. And the um, grout I've used in the shower, just as I saw in the shop, is this impermeable sort of stuff. So basically the idea is that it should be more impermeable to water than normal grout, which should be quite impermeable to water. But the hope is like I can just like really do a good job, like be really careful, get the grout in there. Um, and it will stay sealed forever. I'm only, that's the aim anyway. So just be really careful. And then any like large corners and the bottom are silicon anyway. Um, so hopefully we'll have quite a good watertight shower. And then next I can put the radiator, uh, which should be quite cool. So slowly moving up. Um, unfortunately at this end of the bathroom, I ordered more tiles than in typical style, Lee Ramon, the company out here cancelled it and then re-deliver it so it won't come for like another week um, so I've got to finish the tiles on this end which is just frustrating to be honest um, but it's pretty much the game we're playing is that like stuff is a nightmare to order and buy and it's the worst part of the entire project I'm trying to order a kitchen with Ikea for two months first like I built a thing on the online thing and I thought loads about the colour scheme and the design went to order it and they're like, ah, we don't have these covered fronts anymore. Essentially, probably what will happen is I will build the entire house and then like a month later, Ikea might freaking send me a kitchen. I'm seriously considering looking at other companies, but I pretty much built all the outlets, all the things based around the height of Ikea kitchen, so I'm not limited to it. And I've figured it all out with Ikea. It's just really, really frustrating. Uh, I don't know if I'd recommend it. Anyway, back to it. If I turn it on, it might. I think now I'm filling the tank, then the air is coming out here, uh, making a big noise about it. So basically right now, because the big water tank's filling, the water's coming out here, I just feel like a, a breeze, so this is where the air is escaping, it needs to escape somewhere. So the tank's 200 litres, and I'm guessing when the tank gets to a certain point, um, it's just going to start pouring out of here. But it doesn't seem to be leaking um, anywhere, which matters. Uh, I, I haven't got um, a washer for one of these parts, so there's like a little dribble coming out. But it can probably be tightened or have some silicon on it. But the first thing is just trying to get it working. I'm sure we actually have some, something to be happy about. And there we have it. Power is working. It's not hot. 
just um, try the top one. Put this thing at the top. Ah, look at that. It's like a rainstorm. Beautiful. That's quite cool. It's a good start. So today I'm going to be working on a bathroom sort of vanity unit. It's going to have like a sink which sits on top of a marble platform which is using the old marble which I've taken out of the kitchen of the house so have this connection with the past and have like an older feel to it. And I'm going to build a frame out of steel. It's going to be steel black frame with wooden panels on it, a couple of drawers, a large drawer um, and obviously space for the uh, for the gubbins to go into the tap and underneath like a shelf for kind of towels or whatever. Um, I've done a sort of design of it, I've kind of worked out all the dimensions, kind of talked you through it right now. So essentially this is the sink which sits on above and this is the frame which it will be built out and these will be all the drawers on the frame. Um, it's going to be welded up as a, as a structure. I'm going to use thin stuff at the top, not exactly how it is in the picture. Um, and the end result I think will be pretty cool. Um, and the other thing is like these units, when you go to the shops, they cost for something like kind of decent looking or nice. It's like three or four hundred euros. And then on top of that, when you feel the quality, like the drawers are all shaky and flexible, you're like, well, how long is this realistically going to last for 400 euros? Um, just seems kind of bad value. Um, so basically I'm going to build it myself just because it kind of my visceral feel when I checked out all these units in the shops is like, this stuff is cheap crap made of very cheap materials. Um, might have a nice sink on something on top of it, which like adds the value feel, but actually, um, I don't think it's that good quality and I don't think it's good value for money, so I'm gonna build one myself. So this is the bar I'm gonna be using. One centimeter square, steel bar. Uh, got plenty left over from when I did the balcony. Um, and there's a bunch of other things I can use, but it's metal, but primarily I'm just gonna build out of this relatively cheap metal. Uh, and then I can paint it up with like a matte black kind of water protection. So I've got my metal now into the sizes. So these are the long pieces. These are cut of 40.5, these are cut of 57. And then I'll use the off cuts to do the other last little bits. Um, so I just want to cut these as dead on as possible, mark them out with a little square, and I'm going to cut them with a grinder. So now I'm putting together a bit of jig onto this piece of uh, chipboard. It's nice and flat, uh, so I can basically make sure that when I make the frame, I can make sure my right angles are good I just make my life a bit easier. So I'll put a set up some really correct right angles with the right sizes uh, and then when I weld it, I can see how much it's deformed on the weld and I can make sure I can correct it as well. So I can do one side at a time. So now I'm going to weld up the corners. Um, and then measure down carefully and try and get a perfect right angle. The kind of layers which will make the shelves out in the unit. Um, I'm going to weld it with this MMA welder. It's basically a pretty cheap welder, about 180 euros. 
mask, about 40 euros or 50 euros, uh, and basically you're just gonna kind of fire it up. So it's not super complicated. Probably want it to be, yeah, I think I should use about 120. If it's too much, I can kind of mess around with the, the level I set on it. It's not such a big deal to do that. And just give it a stab, see how it goes. Sticky can get it to go to begin with, but it seems to be good. I'll just bash it off with a hammer in a bit, get the slag off, which is like this crusty layer of um, the flux and stuff which is on the outside of the rod. Uh, and then if it's a problem, I can always just give it another stab. I've got to turn it over anyway to do the other side. Uh, and then essentially I'll be grinding that down, make it smooth. It's not wildly structural, so it's not um, super critical. Um, it'll be way more strong than it needs to be. So find a space between them. Give me a 17 gap. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna do the bottom one. Got the top one, how it works out. Uh, you gotta remember when you're handling this stuff up anywhere around your well, it stays hot for quite a while. Uh, there's always a risk of burning yourself. A little tight. Put on the negative, get the new welding rod, because it's up, and then I can weld that top corner. It's honestly not that complicated or difficult. So we have it, we have two shelves which are 17 centimeters deep. Uh, now I need to put a couple cross members in here because they're gonna have a, a f like a covered up part which will and then we'll contain all the plumbing in the back in, in a line and then we'll have these two drawers which will kind of slide out here uh, obviously we'll have the marble top and everything so good start looks great it's just amazing i love welding you just end up with a load of bits and then you just now you've got a solid frame you can make a prison door can you so now i'm going to add on these um little uprights uh because there's going to be two drawers here I want to attach like a middle panel, it's quite a dead space for the plumbing to go behind. Um, and in this space then basically what I'm going to add is a, uh, yeah, just like a front panel. So that's why I'm going to have it recessed and then the panel will be one centimeter wood uh, and it will kind of just be able to screw in from the back and just be really tidy. So that's the idea. Uh, and I'm just going to kind of add that in now and weld it up. So, a bit of overkill really since it's holding this little piece of wood, but it will help me set up the rest of the things. Now I have this done, I can basically make my other side, which is essentially going to be the same. Uh, and then I can just look about um, connecting them up and cleaning things off, probably do that all at the end. Um, but yeah, one side, it's going to look really great I think, and it's going to be a lot better than the, uh, the cheap nasty stuff which they sell for enormous prices in the stores. So I'm already excited. The other nice thing about this jig is obviously it just means that I'm like very quick making something exactly the same for each side. Uh, but obviously I've got to clean the crap off it. That's going to end up with little bits and it's not going to end up being right. Well, I hope it's not too bad, but I prefer to make it as good as possible if we can. I just put this bottom one in just to hold it open because when you weld in the bottom corner it will sort of try and pull in the outside legs and stop that happening. Just save me a little bit of time. Oh, that looks great. 